Never stop learning, even as rockets falter. After the COPV mishap, SpaceX's teams are already probing and testing solutions. Can Flight 10 still climb before months end? Meanwhile, the Air Force has scrapped its Starship landing pad and Congress has moved to safeguard NASA's space launch system. In a universe of constant change, every challenge becomes our next lesson. So let's break down these updates on today's episode of Great SpaceX to learn more. COPV, or Composite Overwrapped Pressure Vessel, is clearly the most talked about system on Starship right now. Resolving the issues related to this critical component is not just important for the next flight, but essential for the long-term future of the entire Starship program. Recently, we witnessed an important step forward. New images from the McGregor test facility revealed what appeared to be an unusual test. A sudden explosion occurred, followed by an object being ejected high into the air. Many experts believe this was a dedicated test of Starship's COPV system. This test may have been designed to simulate the same type of failure seen during the S-36 incident. In that event, the COPV and possibly other systems were pushed beyond their limits, leading to a destructive outcome. By intentionally recreating similar stress conditions, SpaceX can better identify root causes and refine the design. This process will be critical for enhancing safety and performance as Starship moves closer to operational status. Testing like this plays a central role in perfecting the Starship system. Both Musk and SpaceX have confirmed that the recent COPV failure was unlike anything they had encountered before. Musk shared that the nitrogen COPV failed at a pressure lower than its rated proof level. That is a significant issue, especially considering the vital roles these pressure vessels play. The COPV system is responsible for tasks such as nitrogen purging and initiating engine spin parts. When it fails to maintain pressure, it cannot perform these functions and that puts the entire engine system at risk. Since the engines are at the heart of Starship's power, ensuring the reliability of COPVs is a top priority. SpaceX's immediate goal is to prevent COPV failure that could jeopardize tests and launches. Beyond that, they aim to strengthen these systems to support future versions of Starship, which will require even more performance particularly with the introduction of Raptor 3 engines. In addition to internal pressure integrity, the COPVs must also be structurally integrated into the rocket to withstand these intense vibrations and mechanical stresses during flight. In simple terms, the simulated COPV test at McGregor is a very positive sign. It suggests that SpaceX is actively working to validate and improve this crucial system before resuming high-stakes operations. Currently, S-37 is housed inside Megabay 2, awaiting its static fire test. This provides a timely opportunity for engineers to implement COPV improvements and any other necessary upgrades before critical testing begins. Meanwhile, SpaceX has continued upgrading the ring wall stand at the launch site. The latest photos show that the stand has been fitted with new legs. This design suggests it will not be permanently attached to the orbital launch mount, but rather connected flexibly, which allows it to be repositioned or removed as needed. The wider legs will help ensure proper alignment and stability during operations. Additionally, a new ship quick disconnect arm has been spotted inside Mega Bay 2. It is unclear whether the system is intended for Pad A or the newer Pad B. Since Pad B does not yet have a ship QD system installed, this one may support the static fire testing at Pad A, which makes sense, especially if the ship is placed directly on the OLM without being lifted by the tower. Everything seems to be falling into place for the upcoming static fire of S-37, assuming the COPV upgrades are completed successfully. This test will provide a valuable real-world environment to evaluate the redesigned pressure vessels. While earlier tests often focused on engine systems and fuel tanks, the upcoming test will place greater attention on COPV data. Following the test, SpaceX will likely roll Ship 37 back into Mega Bay 2 for inspection, analysis, and any further installations or improvements. However, one major consideration must be kept in mind. Unlike the previous incident at Massey, this test will take place at Pad A, the main launch site. Any failure here could potentially damage key infrastructure such as the launch mount, the tower, or the tank farm nearby. That would cause delays far more significant than those caused by earlier issues. That is why the success of this next test is so important. If all goes well, we could still see a Starship flight this month. Based on the current state of both the ship and Super Heavy, the timeline remains possible. And that next flight, which is Flight 10, will be a major milestone. In fact, Flight 10 will likely follow similar objectives to previous missions. These include achieving a clean ascent, reaching orbital velocity, deploying a test payload, validating in-space engine performance, and finally re-entering and landing both the booster and the ship in the ocean. 
motion. The goal is to resolve lingering issues seen in earlier flights and to build a stable foundation for future missions. This upcoming flight will also help SpaceX accelerate toward major milestones by the end of the year. One of the key goals is to land both stages successfully, which is the first real step toward achieving full reusability. This will be critical for the company's long-term ambitions, such as establishing high launch frequencies. For example, one proposal outlines 25 flights per year from Starbase alone. Now more than ever, SpaceX needs our support. If you believe in the mission and want to cheer them on through this challenging phase, type never give up in the comment section down below. Your words can become a source of encouragement for the brilliant engineers working tirelessly behind the scenes. Also, thank you to all our amazing viewers. We're thrilled to have reached a new milestone of 180,000 subscribers. Your support drives us forward and we are now aiming for 200k. We noticed that many of our regular viewers have not yet subscribed. If that's you, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button. That way, you will stay informed and help our channel grow even stronger. We truly appreciate your unwavering support. Let's move forward together on this amazing journey. Now, let us turn to the surprising halt of the United States Air Force's Starship landing pad plans. Previously, we learned that the Air Force had been preparing to build a landing site for Starship on Johnston Island, located in the Pacific. The plan was ambitious and forward-thinking. It was meant to support a future cargo transportation program using Starship, specifically focusing on Earth-to-Earth -Earth transport. This system would have enabled the rapid delivery of large quantities of cargo anywhere around the globe, offering a revolutionary new logistics capability. According to the plan, the Air Force hoped to conduct approximately 10 Starship landings per year on the island for the next four years. However, that timeline now appears unlikely. The project has been suspended due to rising environmental concerns tied to the island's unique status. Although Johnston Island was once an active military installation, it is now classified as a national wildlife refuge. It is currently managed by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, which has strict guidelines protecting the region's delicate ecosystem. This new designation makes public and military access more difficult. Environmental groups have expressed strong opposition to the proposed landing site. Concerns include the risk of disturbing seabird colonies, harming marine ecosystems around the atoll, and disrupting fragile natural habitats. According to a report from Stars and Stripes, over 3,800 signatures have been collected in protest against the plan. In response to the mounting pressure and potential environmental impact, the U.S. Air Force officially announced that the project would be suspended. They also confirmed that an alternative location for the landing pad would be sought. This decision signals that collaboration between the Air Force and SpaceX is still intact. However, it also means that the original timeline for the program has been delayed. Identifying a new location, performing necessary surveys, and securing regulatory approvals will take time. As a result, it may be quite a while before we see Starship regularly flying high-speed cargo missions across the planet. In the meantime, what can SpaceX do? The most productive path forward will be to maintain momentum in development. This includes continuing to ramp up construction, testing, and expansion at Starbase in Texas and at SpaceX's Florida operations. While the Earth-to-Earth -Earth cargo mission has been delayed, the underlying technologies must still be completed and proven. These include demonstrating successful orbital operations, payload deployment, re-entry stability, and stage recovery. Mastering these core capabilities is essential, not just for future commercial operations, but also for the credibility and potential of the Earth-to-Earth -Earth cargo system that the Air Force is interested in supporting. Rather than a setback, this delay could be viewed as an opportunity for SpaceX to perfect Starship before these missions resume. While Starship is facing this delay, an interesting contrast can be seen in the recent decision to preserve several NASA programs that were previously facing budget cuts. Earlier this year, the White House had proposed trimming NASA's budget, which would have led to the cancellation of several flagship programs, including the Space Launch System, the Orion spacecraft, and the Lunar Gateway. At the time, these proposed cuts sparked concern and debate within the aerospace community. Yet despite this, these legacy programs have now been saved, at least for the near future. The turning point came when the Senate introduced a new budget reconciliation bill, allocating $10 billion to sustain NASA's major systems. This bill was recently passed by Congress with a 50-50 vote in the Senate and a close 218-214 to 214 vote in the House. The final version of the bill allocates $4.1 billion to fund additional SLS rockets for Artemis 4 and 5, which had been in danger of cancellation after Artemis 3. The Lunar Gateway program will receive $2.6 billion to continue development, and the Orion capsule will be allocated $20 million to support its role in Artemis 4. 
This move essentially secures the future of these legacy programs, despite earlier signs of budget uncertainty. In some ways, this was expected. Even amid funding concerns, progress has been visible. For example, NASA recently completed assembly of the Mobile Launcher 2 for SLS Block 1B missions and accepted delivery of the Halo module for the Gateway. Beyond the Artemis systems, other NASA programs will also benefit from this budget package. These include the International Space Station, the deorbit vehicle for ISS retirement, Mars exploration programs, and upgrades to NASA facilities across the U.S. Of course, these funding targets are reasonable on the surface. However, many observers continue to raise concerns about the SLS, Orion, and Lunar Gateway systems. These systems have faced ongoing criticism over high development costs, delayed schedules, and questions about long-term sustainability. In the case of Gateway, critics also point to the complexity of its architecture and the lack of compatibility with other vehicles. So now a new question arises. Should programs like the SLS and Orion be evaluated separately from NASA's broader objectives? Are they truly serving the nation's long-term space interests, or are they being preserved out of traditional and political influence? We do not yet have the official answers, but while we wait, we would love to hear your opinion. Should Starship receive more support than legacy systems like SLS and Orion? Do you believe Earth-to-Earth -Earth cargo missions are worth the effort? Leave a comment and let us know what you think. Then, like the video and subscribe to our channel to follow the latest developments in the world of SpaceX and space exploration. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.